Hidden San Francisco, the guide to lost landscapes, unsung heroes, and radical histories. Stop D1, the Underground Railroad in San Francisco in the 1850s, Bush and Octavia Streets. A year after the 1857 Supreme Court Dred Scott case, which disallowed rights for any African-descended people in the United States, Archie Lee, a slave when he lived with his owner in Mississippi, became a cause celeb for the free black population of California. After being employed for wages during several months in Sacramento to raise money for his owner, Lee, who was in daily conversation with free blacks, realized that in California he could not be kept as a slave. Abolitionist lawyers eventually won his freedom by arguing that Archie Lee wasn't a fugitive slave since he hadn't run away during his time in Mississippi nor en route to California. Since California was a free state, there was no law regarding becoming a fugitive slave in the state, and slavery itself was not legally permissible in California. During the lengthy dispute, the waterfront was patrolled by small crowds of San Francisco's free black population in search of Lee and or his owner in order to ensure Lee's escape. Eventually, a deputy sheriff and two officers grabbed Archie Lee from an approaching rowboat and brought him to San Francisco where he was later released directly from the courtroom. When Archie Lee, a slave brought to San Francisco, ran away and was returned to his master to be taken to Mississippi, a mob set him free. Did you hear about Archie, Archie, Archie Lee? Being set free, oh well, being set free, they talk about uh, uh. He purportedly went into the home of Mary Ellen Pleasant. Later, in 1858, nearly a thousand members of San Francisco's black community, sensing the rising tide of racial enmity from Dred Scott and more, emigrated permanently to Victoria, British Columbia in Canada. The Underground Railroad had an important, if not widely recognized, conductor in San Francisco in the person of Mary Ellen Pleasant, a biracial woman born on Nantucket Island off Massachusetts and a longtime abolitionist. It was she who met arriving fugitives of African descent at the docks of San Francisco and found them abodes and employment as maids and butlers in the richest homes of early San Francisco. In return, they became her eyes and ears on the machinations of wealth in town. Pleasant herself was a su successful entrepreneur and investor behind the scenes. In 1858, she traveled to Chatham, Ontario, Canada to attend an abolitionist gathering with Frederick Douglass and John Brown. Apparently, Pleasant was the source of $30,000 in cash given to Brown to help finance his upcoming and ultimately unsuccessful raid on Harper's Ferry, then the U.S. Army's state-of-the-art arsenal. She later returned to San Francisco, where she sued a local streetcar company to desegregate it, and won. A memorial to her is in the sidewalk at Bush and Octavia Streets under the massive eucalyptus trees planted in front of what was her mansion at this corner.